Hello, so Weapon Collector tagged me in a video which was two blades for an invasion and the premise of the video sort of tag thing was um, there's going to be an invasion, you can make up what kind of invasion it's going to be in the video it could be an alien invasion, it could be zombies, something like that I guess it could be even be a conventional invasion um, and then it's meant to be two blades for it but he said you know you can change it up a bit if you want to make it more interesting it doesn't have to be blades um, so I'm going to go with the boring old zombie apocalypse because I think that actually interests the most people on here. But what I'm going to say with this, it could either be conventional Romero zombies, you know, where you have to destroy the brain or sever the head to kill them, or it could be 28 days later style infected zombies or infected humans, where they're actually quite easy to kill in comparison because they die the same way humans die. It's just that you know they're like faster zombies. So. What I'm going to say, I'm going to specialise stuff obviously to talk about the more Romero style zombies, but bear in mind, if they're 28 days later zombies, other than the fact they're more dangerous because they're fast, they're actually easier to kill, because, um, you know, they're squishy like regular humans. So, I'm going to talk about my first weapon, and this one actually is a blade. It is a falchion. Um, so, if you don't know much about falchions, I'll go briefly into them now. A falchion was a medieval sword from a around the 1300s to 1600s, might be even even longer period than that. And falchions were specifically designed to be good at cleaving, so as in that, um, chopping. Now, this is quite a late example of a falchion. It's obviously a re uh, reproduction one done for me by Heron Armories. Um, if you want a commission sword done, they are very good. Um, but obviously a bit pricey for some people if you're just more interested in buying like a 100 to 200 pound windless sword type thing. Um, but the falchion um, came in lots of shapes and sizes, but falchions primarily were chopping swords. Um, you know, not because if you look at a lot of the medieval period, you have double bladed swords um, or double edged swords, which were, um, you know, you think of them as like knightly swords, arming swords, long swords, claymores, those sort of things, varying in size and shape, but primarily, um, you know, they're what you think of when you think of a knight with a sword. The falchion was a much simplified sword, but it obviously greatly influenced later swords. You get some big long curve falchions, which obviously influenced sabre designs that came along later. Um, and you have some very short stubby falchions with incredibly big meat cleaver kind of blades. Um, this is sort of a late English example, probably an English one from around the 1400s. This is sort of a War of the Roses period falchion. And what this is, is kind of a very, you know, it's simple in a way, but kind of elegant, but very simple. Um, and as I said, because falchions came in so many shapes and sizes, um, no two falchions were really the same. But this is a 22 inch blade falchion, um, which is ideal for me not being all that tall. Um, and it's got obviously the fighting style handguard on it. You've got a pommel that would do a lot of damage if you brought that down on somebody's head. Again, useful for zombies. You've got the big knuckle guard, which you can punch with, obviously punching with it would do a lot of damage to a zombie and you've got this bit here to protect your hand from incoming sword blows as well as a sword trap on the side of the blade um, so if an enemy blade comes in and you you know kind of parry it correctly you can get it twist your hand there pulling the sword out of their arm and then finish them with the falchion so this falchion obviously can be used for thrusting as you can see it has a tip on it but it's also primarily um, a slashing sword so this would obviously I think be useful against zombies in your zombie scenario because an impact to the neck with this yeah I think if you did a decent swing again I don't want to swing it in here and break the entire room but a decent swing coming across uh, the neck I think although I wouldn't be strong enough to decapitate somebody in a Hollywood fashion with a single swing of this um, I think you'd probably do enough damage to the spine and the neck that your zombies toast um, and as I said, you've got plenty of other bits you could hit zombies with this to do damage to them. Also, if you were in one of these scenarios having to fend off against sort of um, hordes of scavengers and looters and things like that who had machetes or knives, bear in mind I'm in the UK so it's less likely they'll have firearms, although they still could, um, this gives you quite an advantage over somebody wielding a conventional machete. Um, obviously much better balanced and suited for swinging, obviously it's a lot more expensive and everything, um, a proper carbon steel forged blade, as I said, very manoeuvrable. You've got your sword traps on there, you know, you've got much better hand protection. So I think if you've got a bit of training of this uh, versus some regular, you know, kind of looter with a machete, you're probably going to come off better because you've got, you know, a blade much more suited for sword play and everything. 
if you're interested on a side note on falchions, um, from what I've been reading up on them recently, it seems falchions like this were kind of the influence on back swords, and you know later if you think of um, sort of officers or soldiers sidearm swords of a later period, um, you know obviously you have much more famous designs like rapiers and sabers. But if you look at um, back swords from the English Civil War, not War of the Roses, you know the one later on with Cromwell, um, like or sometimes called tuck swords. Um, the blades are very similar to this. The idea that you know you have um, a straight single-edged blade um, that can obviously both slash and thrust quite well. Um, but you know they have more elegant handguards sometimes, or even simpler handguards. But you know I think the falchion would be very good for that. Um, on a side note as well, before I show you my next weapon, I've actually been working on training up my forearms, which you might be able to see because um, I've not really done much forearm training at all and now I'm trying to get into using a sabre and everything as well you really need to do forearm training so I was just following a video that advised you basically do stuff like this a lot with the sword and then you can see that really does put some strain on the forearms which is good obviously for building them up to actually be able to use a sword like this quickly and efficiently you feel it as well in your shoulders and upper arms you know maneuvering them around but as I said, I think the falchion would be very good for um, either a 28 days later zombie scenario or a Romero one. Um, another thing to note before I finish is if you brought the falchion down on somebody's head like that, um, fast enough, even if it's a zombie, I think that would inflict enough trauma on the brain to actually destroy a Romero style zombie that way. Um, you know, you wouldn't just need to sever the head with a sword. I think any proper sword with a good enough swing, you know, would cause catastrophic brain damage that way. Look that way. Okay, time to show you my second weapon. So my second weapon is a medieval style flanged mace. Now you have to ignore the really weird salt kind of stuff that keeps gathering on this. I have no idea what that is and I've asked people before, nobody's got a clue. Um, you know, I've oiled it and everything properly so you get that kind of weird looking salt on there. You can wipe it off, um, the metal's absolutely fine, not rusted underneath, but this always forms back on it. Only ever does it on the sort of top of the head, so I have no idea what's caused that. If anybody knows, let me know, because I'd like to get rid of it and not have it come back. But it's not the end of the world. So, a medieval style flanged mace. This is the windless steel craft um, Italian style mace. Now, what were maces good for? Blunt force trauma. Absolutely loads of blunt force trauma. So in a medieval period, if you're not um, familiar with the history of maces, um, maces and warhammers, weapons designed basically for killing heavily armoured opponents and the way these work is quite simply you swing them with a lot of force onto somebody's head I mean you can hit them elsewhere as well primarily the head um, flanged maces like this uh, maximise damage even more because more of the force is going to be applied to a smaller point obviously if that hits you in the head at any significant speed regardless of if you've got a helmet on or not it's going to crush your head in and cause serious brain hemorrhaging inside your head um, if you saw the video recently where this was tested on a pumpkin, um, the first couple of hits didn't look like it had done much, but it had, um, and then eventually the pumpkin exploded. But if that was somebody's head, you know, the first hit is going to do serious damage. So, this is a heavy weapon. It's nowhere near as elegant as a sword, but this has a long enough handle that you can use it two-handed fairly effectively. Or you can use it one-handed, but it might be a bit heavy for that, unless you've got really beefy arms, which I don't. Um, so, going back to Romero style zombies, why would this work well? Well, because it's a mace, and if you've got a zombie and you bring this down on them, um, this is going to cause your significant brain damage of a single swing. Um, but as it's a mace, it's actually built for doing something like that, it's not like you've got an improvised big hammer or something. Because um, if you consider swinging around a sledgehammer against zombies, compared to swinging around this, the sledgehammer is going to be a lot less controllable and it's going to wear you out a lot quicker. Whereas a medieval style mace is actually designed for, you know, combat. As much as I think maybe a mace that's a bit lighter than this one would be a bit more efficient, maybe a bit shorter and a bit lighter, this thing would definitely do the job. Now, another good thing of a mace is you could certainly use this to break windows and doors if you needed to get into somewhere. Um, you know, Weapon Collector actually did a really good video on, um, you know, like weird stuff you wouldn't normally consider in a zombie survival kit. And that was really good because he had things in there like... Um, door stops and like very quick barricade kits if you wanted to break into somewhere quickly and then barricade the door as quickly as possible. Uh, that's just, you know, a side note not really to do with this video, but, um, you know, like I say, this could be used for multiple purposes, both, you know, entry to somewhere, especially if you needed to smash a window quickly to get in or escape somewhere, um, but primarily, obviously, for bashing in zombie heads. 
This would actually be really good as well if you had zombies with some kind of armor on, like say you had zombies in motorcycle crash gear, or like police riot gear if you had riot police zombies, something like that. Um, this would work very well for that because, again, even if they've got the helmet on, um, a heavy swing with this would certainly, um, you know, cause, I think, devastating head injuries even with protective helmets on, um, which is something to consider. But as I said, I think having sort of a short sword um, that's very specialised for slashing and thrusting, with all the, like, fighting handguards on it as well, plus a mace would be pretty good for um, a zombie survival kit like a zombie invasion, you know. Um, you could carry both of these on you pretty easily as well. The falchion is on my belt, which you probably can't quite see there. Um, I'm not sure. But you could also have, um, you know, the mace attached to the other side of your belt or something like that. Um, or you could have, you know, a lanyard through this mace and then have it hanging off or something. You could carry both of these on you and walk around fairly easily. Obviously, they're going to tire you pretty quickly from swinging them around unless you're built to do it properly and you've had lots of training. I think either one of these would actually be quite good. So I'll just get the falchion out again so I can get a good thumbnail image of me holding both of them at once. But there you go. I think um, for two you know, weapons for a zombie invasion kind of thing, this would do you nicely. As I said, I've covered all the points. I'm not going to tag anybody in this video either because I never know who to tag in these and Weapon Collector had already tagged you know, people who I think might have been interested in doing it. So if you want to do a response to this, just do a response to it basically. And as I said, it's kind of any kind of invasion scenario you want because, um, you know, these are all theoretical things anyway. And I think if everybody just did zombies or whatever, it would get boring quite quickly. So Weapon Collector did an alien invasion one that was quite funny. So thanks for watching. See you later.